Well, we're kind of long overdue to talk about Steam on Linux and gaming on Linux. And when I say Linux, I really mean about three different distros. Well, more than three, but we'll talk about that in a minute. It has been an explosion. There is so much to talk about with gaming on Linux. First, there's Valve. Valve is doing sort of exactly what I said they should be doing a while ago, which is quietly greasing the wheels that get us closer to coherent gaming on a, you know, Linux, a coherent Linux gaming experience, if you will, by funding developers and also using their clout to lean on game publishers to get us reasonable support. I mean, Valve is literally the 800 pound gorilla and they're just sort of, sort of staring menacingly at game publishers you know, for support. Now, from what I understand, this is more than just a monolithic effort by Valve. They're working in secret, they're working in the shadows, you know, as spooky as that is, out of the limelight on many things that need shoring up. But by staying out of the, you know, by staying out of the limelight if things go wrong, well, no big deal. Now, not to overstate support from Valve, but this kind of thing is also inspiring a lot of other developers to step up and, you know, contribute and do things as well in and out of the community. Things are accelerating by so much that I can barely keep up with it. It's also true that the state of Linux gaming across a lot of, uh, you know, distros varies quite a bit. Now for me, I've always wanted Linux gaming to mean it just works, at least across a majority of hardware configs in various popular distros. Some distros have dealt really well with this explosion of interest in Linux gaming and, well, others not so much. I mean, for me, the distro is really just a set of preferences, but it's also evolving to be functionality. So the hardware and driver aspects are also accelerating from what I can tell, meaning that companies are contributing more and getting their stuff running better. Now, it's all this interest from you guys, the users, that's driving this momentum. Now, I've been a big proponent of a technology that's known as VFIO. For me, my daily productivity machine is a Fedora machine that I've slapped a second video card in and that's how I run my box. Now, I've done a ton of videos in the past and our forum, the Level 1 forum, has become one of the largest communities for that kind of user out there where you're running a virtual machine, Windows, even Mac OS, to be able to uh, do your stuff and you know compute on Linux. Now, the magic of VFIO means that I can run a Windows virtual machine with dedicated access to that second graphics card, if you're not in the know. You know my Threadripper Monster with tons of RAM runs a full fat Windows VM, so I don't have to give a second thought to any compatibility or fiddling with anything. It just works, and that stability and that just works that I can count on is worth the cost of a second video card to me. I also have an easy time packaging and shipping that virtual machine to another system without having to do much. I can run multiple VMs to separate concerns a little bit. So I've got my gaming VM and then a VM that I can, you know, work on work stuff in, you know, backup and state management, things like that are easy. Well, you get the idea. I mean, a virtual machine, I'm a big proponent of it. That's not what this video is about. There's been so much work in the last several months on several bits of glue that make life easier in a purely Linux setup. That's, that is no virtual machine, not VFIO. So, you know, I, I have to talk about that. Lutris. It's an open source gaming platform that lets you configure your games, even Windows only games like Overwatch, to run natively on Linux. Now this does not use a full virtual machine and is instead uh, more like a configuration management engine. I mean that's really, it's a configuration management engine on steroids. It helps you find exactly the right combination of settings and software to run your program under Linux. Uh, it might leverage Wine, typically it does leverage Wine, or some other compatibility tool to work its magic, or a specific build of Wine, or Wine with a set of configs, or Wine with a bunch of libraries, or not necessarily Wine if you're running an arcade game, or an emulator, or something like that. Now Valve, switching gears a little bit, Valve Steam has built-in support for something called Proton. Now Proton is awesome. It's also built as a Windows compatibility layer that gets exclusive stuff, you know, exclusive games for Windows to run on Linux via Wine. It's, well, it's really Wine plus some special sauce that, among other things, translates Windows graphics calls to Linux, or Linux compatible graphics calls, I should say, very quickly. Now, there are thousands and thousands of games already that run just fine under Proton. You can run supported games in Proton, or in recent versions, you can elect to take your chances and try to run any executable under the compatibility layer, uh, you know, that is Proton. So, 
If you want to, you know, the specifics of that, like how do you do that, come to the forum at level one. There's too much to really pack into a video or it'd have to be a whole series of videos. But there's been so much development, there isn't any one distribution that's shaping up to be far and away better than all of the others. So it's been kind of weird. For the past several months, I've been running Fedora, Ubuntu, 18.04, uh, uh, Manjaro. Um, those are the three that I'll talk about for now on different desktop hardware configs, not laptops, because laptops is a whole other story. Now Fedora, of course, that's my personal favorite. Getting up and running with Steam, it's pretty easy on Fedora. It's really, it's even easier than Ubuntu and just a couple of clicks. And with Fedora, there have also been some developments with flat packs in the last few months to make it easier to mix Vulkan and Mesa versions if you're using an AMD GPU, so more compatibility. I mean, kind of, sort of, but you can run multiple different incompatible versions of a library for various reasons. NVIDIA, not to be left out, they've also stepped up their support of their proprietary drivers on Linux, but my personal opinion that AMD is solidly edging out NVIDIA with AMD GPU and that the users of AMD GPU are gonna have a better overall sort of first class experience, I think. But, you know, NVIDIA cards do tend to be a little faster, but the performance delta between AMD and NVIDIA cards, it's really just not what it was a few years ago. So no matter which card you have at this point, you're gonna have a pretty good experience, at least if you use the proprietary drivers from NVIDIA. If you value freedom, you're gonna go, wanna go more to the AMD camp. Now I've been seriously considering Manjaro as a gaming OS. I've got several months with experience uh, from Manjaro at this point. And uh, it's really, it's got the best out of the box installer that really covers oddball situations with like the RTX 2070, I've got the MSI RTX 2070 here. It worked pretty much from day one. I mean, not, not really, sort of, kinda. The RX 590, that also just worked. I did a separate video on giving the RX 590 up and running on Ubuntu, and that still, that problem still persists even with the 18.04.2 installer. That trick though, at least with Manjaro, is choosing what graphics option you want in the installer. The free and open driver? If you use the free and open driver with the RTX 2070, eh, you get a big black nothing, just like Ubuntu. That's what I got from the installer anyway. However, from the boot menu, if you just pick the proprietary driver with the RTX 2070 and go, it's totally fine. So you get that, I guess Manjaro has the binary drivers from Nvidia, you know, right out of the box. Is that even, is that kosher? I don't know. The problem with recommending Manjaro to new users is that eventually it will break and you will find a lot of the newbie supporting Linux communities out there, which are doing much better than they have in the past, don't really want to help noobs with Manjaro and I don't blame them. I mean, I, I kind of have to agree with that. Under the hood, Manjaro is really Arch Linux and it's just a little behind. It's usually a week or two behind Arch Linux, like whatever's going on there, but eventually something will come along and you'll need to fix it. Something will get broken, something will be updated. It's a little bit more on the bleeding side of the bleeding edge. So it's not really for total noobs. Now in terms of Manjaro versus Fedora, well, it's somewhat ahead of Fedora as well. So maybe if you're a power user, but just discovering the joy of Linux, Manjaro might be an interesting choice. The Arch Linux Wiki is also a beacon of what documentation should be and a lot of what you would read on the Arch Wiki is gonna apply to Manjaro because the whole common ancestor thing. Now, Fedora, I think, is more on the edge side of the bleeding edge, so you're gonna bleed less. At least that's that's been my experience. Now, Fedora's installer is not perfect though, and it actually has more problems than Manjaro's installer. But I can give you a hint with the Fedora installer, and that is the net install, the net inst version. That supports remote installation via VNC and a text mode installation. Now, Fedora devs, if you're listening, listen up. I think you should offer that text mode installer at least on all installation images just to cover your bases. We at level one can, you know, uh, for the rest of the community, if you're using Fedora and you're stuck, come to our forum. We'll try to help you because the installer can be hairy on certain hardware configurations I've found. Now, Ubuntu 18.04.2, as I mentioned, the installer still has a problem on the RX 590. I got a separate video on that, but 19.04 is due out soon and the updates in it promise to fix a lot of the issues that I would complain about here. So Manjaro is also more rolling release than any of these. Fedora is up to date, but it's not really exactly a rolling release. I mean, kind of, sort of, eh. Ubuntu is more um, not rolling release at all. Ubuntu's gaming experience 
really it's also still best with PPA so like community updates so you get the the stability but then you get some updates from the community but these are not things that you have to have for the gaming experience on Ubuntu it is better it's arguably much better with the PPAs but you don't have to have it I mean you can still use it so there isn't a far and away winner here and that's the problem Steam set up on Fedora, I think is about the easiest setup and very flexible because of the flat packs. But Manjaro is a little cooler and you know, getting Steam going, you just run the start menu and click on Steam, but you gotta do that after you update all of your drivers and then deploy the NVIDIA thing. So for now, I think I'm sticking with my Windows VM, my VFIO setup. There isn't a clear winner for gaming on Linux, except really you, the user, you've got tons of options. But tons of options is also a bit of a problem because of the paralysis that comes with too much choice. Now, I see this, what is unfolding, I'm, I'm delighted with everything that I see unfolding before. I am cackling with just happiness. I see this symphony of Linux gaming unfolding before my very eyes. Progre I mean, the progress here is faster than anything that I've ever seen before. I can hear all of the individual instruments in the symphony and it's beautiful. They're being masterfully played, but there's no conductor. Uh, there is a new challenger on the horizon, Pop OS. Now this is an Ubuntu derivative from System76. I'm not suggesting that that might be the one distro to lead them all, but they've leveraged the experience from a bunch of distros to pragmatically approach the situation to really make Linux sing on the hardware. But it makes Linux really sing on a lot of hardware other than theirs, because System76 really makes a lot of hardware and they want Linux to be awesome on their hardware, but it just so happens you can use Pop! OS on, on everything. So, you know, I think this sort of deserves its own video. A, a video on Pop! OS. I mean, I like it overall, if for no other reason than it is absolutely masterful for laptops that have both an iGPU and NVIDIA graphics, Optimus. They're doing some really killer things to make it easier for users. Uh, yeah, I mean, absolutely proprietary. Yeah, uh, some of this ease of use changes, I guess, curtail some freedoms a bit too. And we'll talk about that, but that's sort of the skinny overall, all of this stuff, on what I've been working on for the past few months. Now, I'm not recommending Manjaro for noobs. I do have a video coming out on Manjaro, generally pretty positive. Uh, maybe Manjaro would make sense for former power users on other platforms like super power users. I really want to, but no, maybe, maybe next year. For me, a full virtual machine and a second graphics card is bulletproof, more or less. Yeah, I mean, yeah, with Lutris and Proton and DXVK, it is less necessary, I'll give you that. The biggest headache now with those is the anti-cheat software, which is almost, but not quite, universally fine in virtual machines. It is still less than fine with Lutris, Pro Proton, Wine, etc. But good news, you know, Valve is leaning hard on companies to work that out. That's some of the stuff that's going on behind the scenes with Valve, at least according to one source. And we've seen lots of traffic on our forum from users being banned by anti-cheat software getting their games up and running under Linux. But generally, I think 99% of those cases from our forum have been resolved. So if you don't have a second graphics card, it's not really a big deal. You can still have a great gaming experience on Linux on a bunch of different distros. But I do think it's past time that I show you the next update in my virtualization VFIO setup system. And that's the next video coming out. It's already shot, just gotta edit it. But I thought this would be some context for that video, that that video is maybe lacking. So I'm Wendell, this is level one. If you're new to Linux, welcome to Linux. Be glad to help you. See you in the level one forums, I'm signing out.